If you have a FlySky radio that uses the AFHDS 2A protocol and you fly quadcopters, get the FLI 14 Plus receiver. If you fly airplanes, get the FSIA6B receiver. Those are my two favorites. There you go. The sponsor for today's video is none other than PCB Way. PCB Way makes custom printed circuit boards. That's what PCB stands for. So if you like designing circuit boards, you can send them your design files and they can create that circuit board for you from their thousands probably of options that they have available. And they can even put all the components on there together so that you have a working product when it arrives at your door, which is pretty cool. But if you're not into PCBs and that type of thing, they also offer rapid prototyping services, which is pretty cool. You can get something injection molded or 3D printed or CNC machined or sheet metal bented, bent, bented, bent, sheet metal work. And they can do it all for you right there. You send them your design files, they can send it back to you and you get like a, you know, it's your thing, your thing. They make your thing for you, which is pretty cool. If that sounds at all interesting, I'll have a link to them in the description of this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. If you fly FlySky uh, with a FlySky transmitter and you use the AFHDS 2A FlySky protocol, there are a lot of receiver options out there, but some are terrible and some are pretty good. And so in this video, I want to share with you my favorite ones and then also some other ones that you might want to consider and then some that you definitely want to stay away from. And so we'll start that right now. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you fly quadcopters, my go-to receiver is going to be the FLI 14 Plus. Now that is actually not uh, made by FlySky. It's uh, some other brand. I think it's usually sold under iRange X as the, the manufacturer or sometimes Happy Model, I think. But uh, it has two antennas and I'll have the editor put pictures up of all this stuff that I'm talking about. We'll have links down in the description of this video. And if you fly airplanes, my go-to, as long as it's a larger-ish larger, larger -ish airplane or like not a tiny airplane, would be the FSIA6B. And this is gonna be a six channel uh, receiver with two antennas and it has um, <clears throat> PWM output and it, it actually can do uh, IBUS as well. So you can use this for quadcopters. However, it's it's really outdated for quadcopters and it's very bulky. But you could you could use it uh, for with that serial protocol, which means you'd only need one uh, output connection um, instead of like s several connections, like for each uh, ESC. Anyway, but that's that's you know you probably know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, it probably doesn't matter. Also, or leave a comment down below if you have questions. So those are the two best receivers that I've used personally for FlySky stuff. Now, the runner-up might be the FSIA6, and that's kind of the older version of the uh, IA6B. Um, I believe the difference is this one doesn't have telemetry, so it won't... Does it have telemetry? You know, honestly, I don't even remember. Um, but I know that this is like kind of an older version. It is a little lighter, a little smaller. And it's kind of a different form factor. So, but this this would work fine, uh, especially for park flyers. All the Fly Sky receivers, I probably would not fly something where I really depended on the reception quality. I just haven't tested them enough. I actually don't fly Fly Sky like normally every day. I've switched over to Crossfire because I fly more professionally and I fly over water and I fly just situations where I I don't want to have to think about um, the reception being as much of an issue. But FlySky is great if you if you just wanna fly, get out there and fly and have fun, fly some airplanes in a field, that kind of thing. And then a runner up for quadcopter receivers would be the X6B, the FSX6B. I started out with that with, when I was first getting into quadcopters with the with the Eachine Wizard X220. And I had one of those in there and, and I, have used several of those in other quads and they work quite well also a little bit bulkier for uh you know kind of compared to modern receivers but it works fine i haven't really had any reception issues i don't think um i did there was some weirdness i think with one of the i want to say it was with the receiver but it was it had been used and abused so there may have just been something damaged on it so i can't really say that there was any issue there but and they may be a little bit cheaper I'm not sure uh, than the than the FLI 14 plus 
but I would get the FLI 14 plus before I got the X6B. I've also used the Flysky FS2A, and that's a four channel receiver. And that's for like for airplanes. So you can hook up four servos to it. Um, and that one, uh, yeah, that one's very small, very lightweight. I've used that in the, uh, I want to say it's the, the mini scout, the FT mini scout. And I haven't had any reception issues with that, but again, you know, I fly pretty close range, but that, that one has worked uh, pretty well as far as I can tell, or as far as I can remember. Another receiver to keep in mind is actually the, I want to say it's the F FSGR three E I think I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, that is technically meant for ground vehicles. Um, but it is a three channel receiver and you can use it on airplanes such as this one, the golden jet is what I call this one. And this one just uses three channels. It has the motor and then it has elevons. So it's, um, it's a elevator and, uh, you know, aileron just on the back, uh, portion there. So like you have a servo on each side of the tail and they give you kind of this rolling or pitching motion. So that works. Okay. I have had, you know, brownouts or some different types of connection issues. So that's not something you want to fly very far or with anything that's, you know, that you don't want to crash, but, but you can get them for cheap sometimes. And, and that can be something if you just want to have some extra receivers. Now, some receivers that you want to avoid, I would, I would not recommend specifically for quadcopters. The, I want to say it's the crossover RX. I think, I think that's what it is. I, uh, they, a couple of years ago, they had sent me some to review and I'm not even sure if they're making them now, but if you find them, um, I, I personally wouldn't get them. I had trouble binding with them and getting them to, to stay bound and updating the receivers. And it was, it was kind of a mess. So I would avoid those ones. If you're flying a micro quad, uh, like the uh, Emacs Tiny Hawk is, is what I used. Um, I put the Flysky FSRX2A in there. I have a video of how to install that receiver in there, so you can check that out. This receiver, I don't actually recommend getting this receiver because, well, for one, it doesn't come with any wires or anything to actually hook it up, which that's not very cool. I don't know why they would send it to me without the wires, because um, most do, most have connectors and you know wires and stuff. Um, but the other thing is I haven't heard very good reviews about this, so I would recommend uh, either the FLI 14 Plus receiver or the newer version of this receiver that I'm using. Maybe I'll put links to uh, to those in the description. In any case, now there are many more receivers, but I haven't used them, so I don't, I can't say a whole lot about them. But you know, Flysky does make the uh, I think it's the FSIA10B, which is a 10-channel receiver. Haven't used it, but it's probably just the same as the 6B, just more channels. Hey, here's a super helpful thing. Here is the, and I'll put it up on the screen. This. Uh, this guide for the receiver protocol uh, compatibility. So Fly, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but it's on Flysky's website. You can see this chart and it will show you the compatibility with different receivers and different transmitters. So that is really helpful. And I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. Let me know if this video was helpful or if you have any questions or comments about this and let me know what receiver you like to use down in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. Go out and fly something, and I'll catch you on the next one. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles.